Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. And welcome, welcome all to our celebration of worship and praise here at the Providence Presbyterian Church of Bustleton on this, what are we, the uh, 17th day? The 17th day of April already in the year of our Lord, 2016. Don't forget, you have one more day to get your taxes in. They gave you the, till the 18th. Um, and uh, this, and, and we are here to worship God, our risen Lord and Savior. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. He is alive. So let us together worship God on this fourth Sunday in the season of Easter. Let us together face the glory that is in His amazing grace on this day that is known on the Christian calendar as Shepherd Sunday. Let us pray. God, our shepherd, we struggle and yearn for life lived to the fullest in your pasture. We come with hunger and thirst, hurts and wounds, grief and tears, questions and doubts, fears and confusion. So here, now, in this time and place, in our worship, may we fully experience and know your loving presence. Speak to us, comfort us, and reassure us through every aspect of our time together this day. Amen. A pastor was doing a children's sermon one Sunday morning about the 23rd Psalm. And he told the children all about sheep and that sheep weren't very smart and that sheep needed lots of guidance and that a shepherd's job was to stay close to the sheep and to protect them from wild animals and to keep them from wandering off and doing dumb things that would get them hurt or get them killed. Now he pointed to himself like this and he asked the children that they, and he told the children that they were sheep and they needed a lot of guidance. And he points to himself and he says, if you are the sheep, then who is your shepherd? There was an awkward silence. And then one little girl, a second grader, she said, Jesus is my shepherd. Now the young, young pastor obviously uh, was caught off guard and, and he asked her, well then who am I? The little girl thought for a moment and then she said with a big smile on her face, I guess you must be the sheepdog. <laughs> and this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And let us take the time to pass the peace of Christ to our loved ones, friends, and neighbors. <laughs> Please turn to hymn number 387 and let us 
us sing together, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us.
ought to do to obey Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Old Testament reading is Psalm 23, which can be found on page 501 in the Old Testament of your few Bible. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for leading us in worship this day. Thank you for your dedication to this church and your love of the Lord. Any children want to come down this morning? Come on down. Hi, baby. Well, if you're not going to come down, I'm going to talk louder so you can hear me. Good morning. Good morning. What is, what, who or what is a shepherd? Do you know what a shepherd is? You forgot. Okay. What's a shepherd? Melinda, well, do you know what a shepherd is? No. A shepherd is somebody who takes care of sheep. A shepherd watches over sheep. And sheep are pretty much helpless animals. The only thing that they can do for themselves is eat. That's all they can do. And a shepherd guides the sheep and nurtures the sheep and watches over the sheep and protects the sheep and makes sure that the sheep gets everything that they need. Now I brought some, some things with us with me this morning. I brought this and this with me. Now, the shepherd had things that he could use to take care of his sheep. Now I know this looks like a baseball bat, but a shepherd always carried a club. And the club may have looked kind of like this, heavy, made out of wood. And if a wild animal came and tried to eat the sheep for breakfast or something like that, the shepherd could bop the wild animal and chase it away. If somebody came and tried to steal, a man or a woman came and tried to steal the sheep, the shepherd would hear that and come over and bop that man or lady over the noggin and teach that person a lesson not to come and mess with his sheep. Now this thing here is called a staff. Okay, you heard, you heard Mr. Cheslow just read, my rod and my staff. The rod was the club and my staff, they will comfort me. And this could be used as a walking stick. And if the sheep got started to wander away too far, or got too, too close to the edge of a cliff, or maybe too close to danger, the shepherd could go like that, grab, take the sheep by the neck, and gently pull the sheep back, and get the sheep back to, uh, to safety. Now the Bible says, God is our shepherd, and we are God's sheep. The 23rd Psalm says, the Lord is my shepherd. And God takes care of us. We are God's people. The Bible says we are, we are, are his sheep, the, the sheep of his pasture. We are God's people and God takes care of us. God gives us all that we need. Now God doesn't need weapons. God doesn't need a club. God doesn't need a staff. Okay? But God does take care of us. And how he does that how God takes care of us is sometimes really mysterious and we can't figure it out all the time. But we do know that God does take care of us, that God loves us very, very much, God will supply what we need, and no one and nothing can take God's love and care away from us. So when you think about sheep and a shepherd who takes care of the sheep, you can think about God. You can think about God. Because that's like a shepherd takes care of sheep. 
God, the good shepherd, takes care of his sheep, and that's us. And that's a good thing. Let's have a word of prayer. Well, this is also, so, you know, I get, you know when, when, I, when I preach too long, so I'm like, hey. yeah, come on. Who, who wants to watch <laughs> let's have, let's have Let's have a word of prayer. We thank you, God, that no matter what, no matter what, you love us, you take care of us, um, and we thank you that we, we hear your voice and, and help us to follow, follow as best as we can. We just thank you for your loving care. We thank you for your nurture and your love. We thank you for children. And we just know, Lord, that <coughs> you love them, we we'll take care of them, and we love them too. And so equip us to watch over them and teach them more about you each and every day. Amen. Hold out.
We have heard your voice calling each of our names. We have felt your strong claim upon our lives. Keep us close to you, dear Lord Jesus. Persevere with us. Keep reaching out to us who sometime, sometimes find it difficult to reach out to you. Keep loving us, we who don't always know exactly how to return your love. Keep being the shepherd of our souls, we pray. Amen. A couple retired to a small ranch out in Arizona, and they acquired a small flock of sheep. At lambing time, it was necessary to bring two newborns into the house for care and bottle field feeding. And as the lambs grew, they began to follow the rancher's wife all over the farm. It was much like the old children's member, uh, uh, nursery rhyme, everywhere that Mary went, the lambs were sure to go. And she was telling a friend of hers about these two very clingy lambs. Well, what did you name them, her friend asked. Goodness and mercy, she replied with a sigh. Goodness and mercy, why that, her friend asked. She replied, well, you know the words from the 23rd Psalm. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Both of our lessons for this day refer to sheep and shepherds. It is probably the most familiar image throughout all of Scripture. God is our shepherd. We are God's sheep. And sheep were very, very important to the agricultural lives of the ancient Hebrew people. And that is why sheep are, are mentioned more than 400 times in the Bible, more than any other animal. For King David, who authored much of the book of Psalms, the metaphor of the sheep and the shepherd was an obvious way for him to think of his relationship with God. He had vivid memories of his life as a young shepherd before he became a mighty warrior and a fantastic king. Thus he begins the 23rd Psalm with the words, The Lord is my shepherd. But King David was not the only Old Testament writer to use this imagery. The prophet Isaiah used sheep to illustrate the waywardness of God's people. Isaiah wrote in his 53rd chapter, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And I believe that Isaiah has, has pretty much gotten us all figured out here today. And of course, this descriptive <coughs> language is carried over into the New Testament concerning our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the good shepherd. He is the ultimate shepherd of God's people as well as the unblemished sacrificial lamb. Now unless you've grown up on a sheep ranch or spent uh, many, many hours at a petting zoo, you're probably not all that familiar with sheep. And in any case, you probably wouldn't think that being described as a sheep would be very flattering. Most of us probably would prefer to think of ourselves as being too smart or too sophisticated or too free-spirited and individualistic to follow anyone in a flock or a herd. Sheep, unless you're having a hard time falling asleep, tend to be woefully underappreciated. When most people think about sheep, we suppose them to be feeble-minded animals, too stupid to think for themselves and therefore apt to follow along with the rest of the flock, sometimes into very dangerous or deadly situations. And it is true. It's true that if two sheep wander away from the flock and a wolf begins to devour one for breakfast, the other will just stand there ignoring the wolf and his, and his, and his, and his brother's sheep and just eat grass as if nothing is happening, and then keep on grazing until that wolf comes back and eats him for lunch. But when you really get to know a little bit more about sheep, you begin to realize that being a good sheep, that is, 
a sheep that sticks with its flock and tries to remain close to the shepherd, requires some basic qualities that are also essential to being a disciple or a follower of Jesus Christ. And like the disciples of Christ, a sheep benefits greatly from belonging to a flock, gaining safety and guidance and nourishment, correction and care, as well as the opportunity of being useful and productive. Being a member of the flock is the sheep's equivalent of owning an American Express card. Why? Membership has its privileges. But membership, membership of the flock also has its responsibilities. And in our more independent character, we are sometimes resistant to those responsibilities. We tend to rebel. We tend to reject the idea that we too need to be led. We like to do our own thing. So, it requires the work of the Holy Spirit to make us into the right kind of people or the right kind of sheep to follow Jesus, especially those of us who, if you don't mind a bad pun, are seriously hard of hurting. Wow. We need to ask ourselves, what does being a good sheep require? How can we make sure that we're in the right flock, obeying Jesus, the good shepherd, instead of wandering off on our own to be devoured by the wolves of this world? What do we need to know and what do we need to do as members of the sheepfold of Jesus Christ, the good shepherd? Now, our lesson from the Gospel of John is set during what is called the Festival of Dedication at Jerusalem. The Festival of Dedication is what we know, know nowadays as Hanukkah, or the Feast of Lights, and it's celebrated for eight days each and every December. The Bible tells us that Jesus is in the temple walking in the portico of Solomon. The portico of Solomon was a long, covered walkway on the east side of the temple. And as Jesus walked, some inquiring Jews came to him and asked, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered, I have told you, but you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life. They will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of his hand. And he concludes by saying, the Father and I are one. Now I want you to notice what Jesus says first about his flock. First of all, he says, he knows them individually. Now this is a beautiful picture of our relationship with God because each one of us is known by God. God knows everything there is to know about us. God knows, according to the Bible, God knows exactly how many hairs are on your head. Or in some cases, how many hairs used to be on your head. And, it's, and, there, and there are billions of people on this planet. Yet the Bible says that God knows each and every one of them by name. So Christ knows his sheep by name. Christ loves his sheep unconditionally. And he keeps loving us over and over and over, millennia after millennia after millennia, even when we reject his love. He is compelled to love us even though we sin, just as do all those outside of his flock. And that's the first thing that Jesus says about our relationship with the Good Shepherd. He knows us individually. He knows us completely. But listen to what comes next. Jesus says that his sheep listen to his voice. This relationship between the sheep and the good shepherd 
is not one-sided. God loves, God cares, we listen. Some time back, um, a man in Australia was arrested and charged with stealing sheep. He protested that he owned the sheep and that this one particular sheep had been missing from the flock for several days. Now, when the case went to court, the judge did not know how to decide this matter. Finally, in, de you know, in just a desperation, he asked that the sheep be brought into the courtroom. And then he ordered the plaintiff, that is the man who had accused the other man of stealing the sheep, to step outside of the courtroom and call the animal. The sheep made no response except to raise its head and look a little bit afraid. Then the judge instructed the defendant to go outside of the courtroom and call the sheep. Now when the accused man began to make a distinctive call, the sheep stopped everything it was doing and it ran toward the door and his voice. It was obvious that the sheep recognized the voice of his master. His sheep know him, said the judge. Case dismissed. Now let me ask you a question. Is this imagery descriptive of your relationship with Jesus Christ? Do you listen to the voice of Jesus, the good shepherd? Can you distinguish his voice from all others in a very, very noisy world. And when you do, do you immediately follow it? It reminds me of something that Presbyterian minister and children's television personality, Fred Rogers, that's Mr. Rogers to many of you, once wrote. He wrote, listening is where love begins. Listening to ourselves and then to our neighbors. And I believe that kindly Mr. Rogers in the proper context would have added as well as listening to God. And I believe that, that most of you will agree, will agree that, mo that we are great talkers when it comes to our devotional life, but not such great listeners. We give God our orders and we give God our requests for the day, but we are not so committed to reverently listening to the orders and the requests of God for us. And I'm sure that if my own hearing were not so darn selective, I would often hear God speaking to me more through my wife and through my kids. Jesus says that he knows his sheep but then he adds, they hear my voice. And then Jesus says, when they hear his voice, his sheep follow him. Author Neil Anderson tells about watching a shepherd lead his flock on a hillside outside of Bethlehem. The shepherd sat on a rock while the sheep grazed. And after a while, he stood up just said a few words to the sheep and started to walk away. The sheep immediately stopped eating and followed him. Anderson said that the words of Jesus in our lesson from John's Gospel suddenly took on new meaning for him. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And I believe that you can judge whether a person is a disciple of Jesus Christ by how well he or she listens and follows. Many of us desire the benefits of belonging to Jesus' flock, to be known completely and intimately by God without the responsibility of listening to him and following him on a daily basis. We want to know him as our savior without having him as our master. Jesus is well aware of our weaknesses and our waywardness, so he adds this final word of grace. No one can snatch the sheep away from him. The Lord Jesus has us and will not let us go. Nothing in all creation can come between us <coughs> and our shepherd the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a story from yesteryear 
that I believe says it beautifully. The year was 1850. On the prairies of the Midwest, snow was still lightly falling in the month of March. And there was a little log cabin out on this prairie in which a little boy named Timmy was on the verge of death, death from diphtheria. A pastor rode through on horseback and stopped to visit with Timmy since he heard that Timmy wasn't doing well at all. And he went into Timmy's bed, bedroom and he went to his room and found him sick in bed. The pastor asked Timmy if he knew the 23rd Psalm and Timmy told him yes, he had learned it in Sunday school. And the pastor decided to teach Timmy to say the 23rd Psalm in a very, very different way. He told him to, to count the words on his fingers, beginning with his thumb. The Lord is my shepherd. And this way, when he said the word my, he would be holding, holding the, the fourth finger of his hand. The Lord is my shepherd. The preacher explained your parents wear their wedding rings on the fourth finger of, the, of their left hands. And that was the finger of love. So whenever Timothy recited the Lord's Prayer, and whenever he recited, the, the Lord is my shepherd, he grabbed the fourth finger on his hand, which reminded him that the Lord is his personal shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And this pleased to me. And he recited, recited the psalm accordingly. Well, the pastor bid Timmy farewell and went on his way. When he had come back to see Timmy again, it was springtime, and he noticed that there was a mound of upturned dirt with a cross on it in the backyard. He realized that Timmy had passed away. And Timmy's parents spoke about what a good boy he was, and then they described his final night. They had kissed Timmy goodnight, and in the morning when his mother went in to check on him, she realized that he had died. But there was something that caught her eye, and she found it a bit strange. She noticed that Timmy was holding on to his fourth finger. And she asked the pastor if, if he had any idea why. And he could only answer her with, with tear-filled eyes. But we know what it meant. The Lord is my shepherd. Or as Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never, never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand because what my Father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it from his hand. The Father and I are one. Friends, Jesus the Good Shepherd knows us by name. We are to listen to his voice and follow him, knowing that our shepherd will provide our every need. And we know that nothing, nothing will ever separate us from his loving care. This is a promise to we, his people, the sheep of his pasture. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent Jesus, our good shepherd, to gather us together. May we not wander from his flock, but follow wherever he leads us, listening for his voice and staying near him, until we are safely in your fold to live with you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our <coughs> shepherd and our Lord. Amen. Our hymn of reflection this morning is in your blue hymnal. I will ask you to please turn to hymn number 172. Please remain seated as we sing together, My Shepherd Will Supply My Need.
now with gladness let us present the offering of our lives and labor to the Lord. The one who sows sowing sparingly will also reap sparingly. The one who sows bountifully. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our guiding, nature, nurturing, caring, and loving shepherd, we thank you. We thank you for being our guide, for being our protector, for indeed supplying our every need, for watching over us and letting us feel your presence and your strength your patience, and especially your love, mercy, and amazing grace. We come to you this day in prayer. We have many, many things on our hearts and our minds this, this morning. Uh, loved ones who have passed away, who have gone to, on to their reward of being with you through eternity. Friends and loved ones who are hospitalized and uh, need to feel your presence and need to feel your healing power. Friends and loved ones who may be facing their last 
days on this earth and our friends and loved ones who are caretakers of these beloved folks. And we ask in, that, in those situations, Lord, to give, give people dignity and even and much peace and even some joy in their final days. Surround them with your love. Put your loving arms around them and let them feel the bliss and the peace of their good shepherd. And strengthen their caretakers with much love and, and, and patience and determination and strength to do what, what needs to be done. To carry on and just to keep loving and keep hoping. Lord God, we love you. And we thank you. We thank you again for birthdays and just times <clears throat> when we can let our hair down and just shut out the cares of the world and eat cake and eat <coughs> and just have a good old time. <clears throat> we thank you for those respites during the cares of this world. We love you and we praise you. And we say the words that Jesus taught us to say when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Our closing hymn this morning is in your blue hymnal. Please turn to hymn number 276 and rise if you are able and let us joyfully sing to the Lord, Great is thy faithfulness. Number 276. <laughs>
shepherd endures even when we aren't very faithful. His great love endures even we don't love him back. Even when we feel that nobody could love us and we don't feel like loving. His great joy endures when we don't feel joyful, when we see no reason for joy. And he covers us with his peace even when we are agitated and, and <clears throat> reckless and feeling restless. And, and he's our great shepherd. And he's watching, us, watching over us each and every moment of each and every day. So with that thought, you can leave this place <coughs> and be at peace because our needs will be provided. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us this day, now, and forevermore.